okay, so when I'm starting the experiment, I'm like, how fast do I need to drink these beers? And, and <laughs> Faster than a speeding bullet. I ran until my muscles burned and my veins pumped battery acid. More powerful than a locomotive. An idea is like a virus. Resilient. Highly contagious. Able to leap tall buildings with a single bound. All right, guys, before we hop into the great beer experiment that we are talking about today, very exciting stuff, I do want to say head over to betterhumanology.com, sign up for a free membership. There's a ton of good uh, resources, training programs, mental toughness training, uh, all sorts of good stuff, daily workouts, a whole bunch of stuff that you can get at betterhumanology.com if you sign up for a free membership. Uh, And did I mention that it's free and that you can have a lot of stuff when you sign up? All right, that's all I got. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you guys should do, though. Yeah, there's one other thing. If you guys could go over to iTunes, and if you believe that we are five stars, if you could rate us that five stars, we would greatly appreciate it. And if you don't believe we're five stars, then that's fine. Just You can keep listening, but don't worry about rating us. <laughs> all right, let's talk about the Great Beer Experiment. Oh, let's do it. And we're back. All right, guys, welcome to the Better Humanology podcast. My name is Jared Moon. With me is Talon Schwamm. We are your hosts for the Better Humanology podcast. And today we have a pretty exciting episode. We really had to push ourselves here way outside of our comfort zone, get uh, uncomfortable, if you will. And I don't know, man, it was was pretty tough. So we had to kind of like just sit around and drink some beer this episode <laughs> for our experiment so this this week was such a challenge for me one of the hardest experiments yet we had to <laughs> sit down literally not move and and have a few brews uh so why on earth would we want to do something like that talon is it because beer makes you a better human i don't know let's find out let's uncover it in the next how many ever minutes it takes on this podcast, find out what beer can or cannot do for you. So, real quick, we had an experiment this week. A uh, beer experiment. We're calling it the Great Beer Experiment. That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> what, what, what are you calling it, Talon? Uh, I'm calling it a uh, a mistitled experiment because it's going to be able to be used for so many other things. Yeah, so what we were actually doing, we, we I chose uh, beer... Um, <laughs> just, just for fun, uh, but what we did was a heart rate variabil- variability test. So what you do is you uh, you take your heart rate first. You want, should I go ahead and outline the experiment? Yeah, you outline the experiment, and I'll talk about some about stuff about why we did it. Okay, so how, how you do this, the, the, what we're trying to accomplish is to find out whether or not you are allergic to a food. And so you you do you can do this over the co- course of a couple of days if you really feel like you're allergic to some sort of food. Um, you take your heart rate first thing in the morning, and then every time you eat, uh, you take your heart rate uh, kind of like right before you eat. Then you take it 30 minutes after you eat, 60 minutes after you eat, and 90 minutes after you eat. And you're and you're looking for variation in your heart rate, uh, you know, based around your meals. And if uh, from our research, if if you have a 15 beats per minute difference between your lowest heart rate, which should be when you first wake up, and any meal, 30, 60, or 90 minutes after you eat a meal. If there's more, 15 or more beats per minute, then that's a red flag. You probably have some sort of food allergy. So that's eat a the meal experiment. Or have a beer. Meal or a beer. And <laughs> we chose so- beer because, hey, why not? So what we did uh, was drink two beers uh, and have and follow the exact framework we just told you yeah i figured it would be i mean you know i didn't know that it could be used for anything so for me i was like this is gonna be great i'm gonna be able to find out hey am i allergic to beer or not anybody could use this and find out hey should i stay away from beer i mean am i okay to have one every now and then so for me i was i was really excited about about it in that respect but now understanding how it could be used for anything it opens up a whole new world for me yeah, biscuits, pizza, <laughs> anything really. Cake. Yeah, I really, I really, I don't know if I want to do this experiment for things like that. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to find out, right? <laughs> so, what was your? Uh, 
I, I don't know. We kind of know what it's going to help. It's going to help us find out if we're allergic to something. But what was your hypothesis going in? What did you think? Did you think you're going to be allergic to beer or what? I thought, hell no. You know me from college. I mean, we, we had some. Yeah, I mean, you've had some good times before. You know, sometimes we'll, we'll maybe we'll share a, a, a brewski. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I thought, there's no way I'm going to be allergic to this. I mean, I, I, I'm a beer connoisseur. I'm not. I'm not one of those like, you know, have beer every night of the week, or even have beer every other night of the week. But I like the taste of my beer, so I was like, nah, I think. I think I'm gonna be okay with beer. I think beer's beer's gonna be okay for my body. What'd you think? The exact opposite. So while I am, <laughs> I do enjoy beer. I I really like dark dark beer, uh, but I don't know. The last couple of years, I can honestly only have like two beers, and I'll have some sort of mild hangover or headache or something, some sort of adverse side effect anytime I drink beer. And so I like I kind of had stopped drinking beer for a long time. Uh, and so I thought there's something going on, like there, maybe I'm allergic or something is up. And that, that's part of the reason I wanted, really wanted to do beer for this because, um, yeah, I couldn't be at a restaurant and have one or two beers and be okay. Like a few hours later, I'd always have something wrong with me. So you rigged it for me. I rigged it for you. I really, this is kind (laughs) of a a personal experiment. I wanted to find out if I was allergic (laughs) to beer, uh, because I had no idea why I couldn't drink like a single beer anymore. And so, yeah, I thought that I had some sort of food allergy and, uh, I don't know, gluten, wheat, something. I, you know, I thought I was allergic to something in beer and I wanted to find out. So I thought that I was. And so we did the experiment. We sure well did. (laughs) (laughs) We sure damn well did. And, uh... All right, dude, you got some interesting facts for us on beer. That's what I wanted to go over. I was just trying to find a good way to get to it. Yeah, uh, we got it. We brought it. up my hypothesis, but, you know, I really want to talk about, like, why we want to do the episode in the first place. So I'm going to read this little blurb about what food, food sensitivities and maybe allergies can do to you. Okay? I would love that. Food sensitivities are a reaction from the immune system or a result of the body's lack of proper enzymes to digest foods. When the body reacts to a food, it sends out inflammatory proteins and cortisol, which create low-level chronic inflammation. This type of chronic inflammation may impair digestion, cause sore joints, headaches, and brain fog. Ooh. Inflammation also triggers weight gain because it affects a specific part of the brain hypothalamus causing it to become insulin and leptin resistant decreasing inflammation is critical to any effective fat loss protocol unfortunately a person with low level inflammation often does not connect the symptoms with the foods or may not even be aware of them this is where easy to use self tracking tools like the heart rate monitors come in handy boom that's why we wanted to use it boom All right. thank you is that it is that it Dr. Talon (laughs) that's it I love that. Uh, that is my analysis. So can I tell you the real, the, like the most fun secret part of the experiment? Yeah. All right. So we kind of, kind of got out of the what? Drinking the beer. Yeah, but it's more than that, dude. So I know, I know there's some listeners out there who can re- who can relate to this. So if you guys or or gals want to find out, for, in, in my I, my personal, I I'm married. I have two kids, and you know I I told Emily. Uh, when I was doing this experiment, I was like, hey, uh, I got this experiment later. Uh, I got to do so. Yeah, um, I'm busy. I got to work. Yeah, kind of like I'm busy. I got to work. <laughs> I, I got to do this tonight. Um, make sure I get it done before Talon and I podcast. And she's like, okay, that's cool. You know, she's she's very supportive. She's like, that's cool. What, what What's the experiment this week? And I was like, well, I got I to gotta drink a couple of beers and I got to sit on the couch and I, I can't do anything for like an hour and a half. She's like, really? You just can't? And I was like, yeah, actually, I'm gonna actually, I can only get one beer at a time. So like, you're gonna have to bring me the next beer. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I'm not gonna be able to help with the kids' bedtime routine or anything because I'm working, and and I really apologize. And so th- th- you know that that was uh, my my crappy husband's story. Um, it wasn't that. She was- she wasn't going about her day like being like she oh, actually she actually working was, hard over there. <laughs> she, she actually thought it was pretty funny, but uh, no, I just yeah. 
if if you want to, you know, maybe throw out an excuse on why you need to chill for like, and, and it's actually really hard for me to sit down and do nothing for an hour and a half. Oh gosh, um, <laughs> did you find that out today too? For you, that's an understatement. My oh, man. for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I couldn't. I couldn't wait for the timer to be done because I was just sitting there, literally on the couch, doing nothing, feeling pretty awful about myself, and uh, yeah, drinking some beer. Not not my norm, if you will. Yeah. And yeah, so I guess we should get to it, man. Um, what? Let, no, 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 no! I want to talk about mine. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I forgot. Let's uh, let's hear your. <laughs> so beer when I started the experience, ex- when I started the experiment, remember. I remember I, I didn't know that this could be used for for just about everything. So Jared's t- rocking me down this this rabbit hole of, you know, have these beers. I'm like, okay, so when I'm starting the experiment, I'm like, how fast do I need to drink these beers? And he, and <laughs> he told me within 15 minutes. And so <laughs> I, I popped up. I was like, 15 minutes? That's that's nothing. That that's that's a long time. I popped open one of my nice beers, and I was like, okay. And then I, I started sipping on. It. Next time I look at it, it was like you know, nine minutes left. And I was like, Oh dang, I wasn't even halfway through. I haven't tried to chug a beer. <laughs> like it had to be since like early college. I don't even remember chugging that much late in college. So for me, it was so ridiculous. Redif- it was so difficult. Like I-, I choked, ended up chugging that very nice beer. <laughs> and then afterwards I was like, Oh, I'm going straight to Bud Light. And I, and I chugged that one too. For- but for me, it was so difficult to chug two beers just to even <laughs> start the experiment. I think it's- you talked about it a little bit because, you know, it's hard. You're saying it's hard for you to even drink two beers or anything beyond two beers at this point. Um, I think that's just because we're getting older, man. Yeah, we are. We're showing our age here. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to trying to determine if I'm just getting old or something's changing. I'd like to just say something else is changing. Yeah, <laughs> but for me, other than that, for me, it was you know I, I was able to just just you know measure myself, my heart rate, nice and easy, like you on the couch. I don't get so. I don't get so annoyed. Um, <laughs> we're taking a little bit of quiet time, so <laughs> a little meditation. Yeah, yeah. Maybe 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 a little box breathing. Well, that's good. I'm glad that you had a a good time. Did you watch TV? What'd you do? I did. I, I sat there on the couch like like you did, but I did watch TV. So in saying that, I probably even though it was positive that I was testing, you know, my allergy to beer, I was also killing myself slightly. If you listen to our other episodes and sitting down. That's true. Which <laughs> I'm still standing, by the way. I really, I'm starting to enjoy it quite a bit. How staying desk can save your life, my man. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. All right, dude. I want to know your results. I want to know about your heart rate. I want to get into your personal medical history. Oh yeah, this is about to get down and dirty for a second. So when I woke up, my heart rate is a little bit is a little bit higher. So let this... me just let, let me just remind everyone real quick. You take your heart rate in the morning. Boom. When you wake I'm... up. You yep. take it right before you start your whatever you're going to eat or drink drink your beer, and right. then it's 30, 60, and 90 minutes you take your heart rate again each of those time frames. All right. Each interval, yep. Yep, all right. Yep, for me, waking up was 60. Okay. Right, bef- right before I started drinking any beer at all, it was at 65. Nice. Do you drink your beer first thing in the morning? No. Okay, okay. No, I, I waited <laughs> probably f- five hours or so until Cause you're a gentleman. afternoon time. Yeah, because there's a certain time of day you shouldn't be having a beer, right? Yeah. I, but, I mean, you wake up at like noon anyway, though. Not true. Okay, 11.30. I'm sorry. Not true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a diligent night owl, but I don't wake up that late. Um, probably more like 8. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, right before I, I took it, I took, drink any beer, I was 65. And then 30 minutes after I, I struggled, remember – during that 15 minutes to choke down those two beers, mm-hmm. uh, I was at 68. So I'd only increased by three beats per minute from my right before I drink uh, test. Okay, so 60 oh. when you woke up, 65 pre-beer, 68 Correct. one beer. Correct. Okay. Well, two beers. Two, two beers. beers, 68, yeah. 30 minutes in. 30 minutes, right. And then so an hour, which is very interesting, it spiked to 72 beats per minute. Uh-oh. 72. So, yeah, but then at, at 90 minutes, went back down to 68. So I, I will throw a little wrench in there. I, I took a, a real quick, um, you know, heart rate of mine right after I took the two beers. I figured it'd be really, really high because it was intense for me to, like, choke those down, like I said. Uh, so it was a 73 right when I finished those. So I've got I've got a pretty big range in there where it's cutting it close for me. Okay, so, yeah, just... 
to remind everybody of the test, so the our research says that if you are from your lowest when you wake up for you is sixty, and if the highest deviation you have after a meal is fifteen beats per minute or more than that, then you have a big red flag. So seventy five would be your number, and you're at seventy three. Right after two beers and an hour and a half, ish. More, well, more that, than that an hour and a half. Seventy three was right immediately after, and, well, and so when was the seventy three? When was that? It was immediately after. I mean, like the second I put that second beer down, I, I went into the heart heart rate test. Okay, so maybe you were just deprived of oxygen a little bit. Yeah, that and, and very well and your, could be. Your body it, was because... panicking a little bit. So at ninety minutes, you were at seventy two, though. Correct. So which, twelve which is beats per minute. Tonight. Right, which is very close to 15. So perhaps I have a slight... You might be slightly allergic to beer, my friend. Allergy to beer. Does that concern you at all? Um, Would that sway you, know, you in drinking beer at all? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I'm allergic. I mean, even if I'm just slightly allergic, I think that gives me all the information I need to know that I probably should turn um, into a wine guy if I'm going to have a little bit of alcohol for the night. <laughs> yeah, glass of wine. You got the antioxidants. It's healthy, right? There you go. Yeah, just trying to become better. That's interesting, man. I think, yeah, I think if I, you know, because you just read all that stuff on infl- inflammation and all the bad right. things that it can do to your health and everything. I don't. Yeah, it would be hard to know something for a fact. I mean, you don't know for a fact, but you're, you know, that that's it might be a little bit upsetting to your physiological system. Well, the thing, the thing about the, the negative things I read from the inflammation, um, impaired digestion, headaches, and brain fog are all things that can be caused by alcohol within itself. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> True. That's so, true. Um, yeah, maybe I can... Uh, but I don't think alcohol has elevated heart rate. It's supposed, not, not it's by supposed to make you more docile, right? Uh, I think that depends on the person. I know some uh, angry drunks out there. True, but it is a depressant <laughs> overall, right? I mean, it is. It is correct. Yes. All right. It is, it is a depressant. Are right, you want to hear my numbers? I want to hear your numbers. All right, man. So I wake up, fifty-one beats per minute in the morning, um, and then I. That was yeah. That was in the morning, and then I went and sat on the couch, and I gave myself about five minutes to chill out because my heart rate was pretty jacked up because I've been playing with my kids. Um, and then it, it, it rested down to about 60 beats per minute before I had any beer. And then I drank two beers in 15 minutes. Um, you know, similar story to you. I didn't have to end up chugging, but I got like, I got around the halfway point and I was like, I'm going to have to drink faster than I am. So two beers in 15 minutes these days is not, not exactly an easy task. No. Um, no. Uh, so 30 minutes in, I was at 54 beats per minute. 60 minutes in, I was at 56 beats per minute. And then 90 minutes in, I was the exact same 56 beats per minute, um, which is a at the highest a 5 beat per minute deviation between morning and 90 minutes after beer. Womp, womp. Womp, womp. And I'm the one who thought I was allergic to beer. Yeah. And I still probably won't drink beer because it still does mess with me. I don't think it's, like, psychological. I actually feel some effects from from drinking beer, but I don't think that I have, like, an allergy from it. This is so ridiculous. So so you rigged the experiment to test if you're allergic to beer. Yeah, because I had an honest curiosity. I thought I might be. And you're not at all. And then, boom, I find out I am. Thanks a lot. Yeah, dude. Ruined beer for me for the rest of my life. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, ne- next time you come over, I'm definitely going to offer you one and see what happens. <laughs> I'm about to say, no, I'm allergic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, you might be gluten intolerant. How does that make you feel? That's scary. Everything is like, you know, no gluten, gluten-free this, gluten-free that. Now I'm going to have to start, you know, I probably should have been buying things that were in that area or that section anyways to become as healthy as possible. Now you're going to become one of those guys. Can't order anything at a restaurant or do anything. Now I have to be getting my wife to be like cooking everything gluten free too. Yeah, and that's a learning process. I know. <laughs> oh, you sound like you have some experience with this. Uh, Emily's gone on and off gluten free, but her parents are like 100 percent gluten free, and uh, but they have been for a long time. Like before gluten free was popular, because when we first started dating, I was like, uh, "What's gluten?" Yeah, <laughs> and uh, 
yeah, they've they've been dealing with it for a long time. So I just know a lot about gluten allergies, sensitivities, and what you can and can't have. So why did we want to make this specifically about, other than your curiosity about how it's affected you, why did we want to pinpoint beer a little bit in this, this episode? I told you my reason, man. I wanted to know if I was allergic to beer, whether or not I could drink it or not. That's it. See, I think beer has a lot of of uses maybe i should say alcohol um as either like confidence boosting or motivation or just to create a better social environment sometimes i'm not i'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and condone alcohol by any means uh, for any person but i think there are some situations that i thought would be fair enough to bring up where um either beer but usually beer uh, is used um in cohorts, kind of in combination with a, uh, like like an exercise, you know what I'm talking about? Beer used in conjunction with an exercise. Conjunction's a good word to use with that. Yeah. So you know, like like those those pub running clubs, or like uh, like people like sometimes they have those buzz runs, like or the, like pub running clubs, like or those groups of people that get together and then they they're like they're basically like cross country type of clubs that they run from like. One bar to another one. It's usually like a few miles in between. And that's kind of their yeah, like of, one beer per pub. Yeah, and that's kind of like their social event. And I feel like that that can be for some people like a motivation, you know, social type thing where beer is actually helping them to become a better human in the long run because it's helping them to get in better shape, helping with mental wellness, and because they're hanging out with you know people in a social environment, so they're getting that that bit of you know benefit to their life. I don't know. I think there's a little bit of argument can be made about beer being used in a way to augment our lives, make us potentially better humans, right? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, why, why not just run without the beer? That'll make you way better human. Well, sure, but some people may, might need the motivation of meeting up with their buddies down the road because they're going to have a beer, and that's really what they're looking for every mile is that that beer they get to stop over and have. So really it's like the, it. if we jump back to the wearables episode, we say that wearables can give you short-term motivation by... Ah, it's true. Wearables can give you short-term motivation by wearing it and making you want to move or exercise more because you're wearing it. So in the case of pub running, which I've never heard of, uh, you would... Haven't. No, I have not. I've never heard of that. Wow. Uh, uh, you would just... Your motivation is, is the next beer. The only thing is, I, I mean... You get, I, I think the average, if like you just had to like give a gross average of running, it's like a hundred calories per mile. Um, that like, and and what's the average beer? Like a hundred calories per beer? Like it depends on the type, but yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Is it making you a better human by? I, you're still working out your respiratory and cardiovascular systems, but I don't know. Oh, dude. you're talking in the strictly physical, you know. Are, are you taking two steps back to to take two steps forward, maybe, is what you're saying. Right. Okay. Well, I'm talking about maybe a little bit, you know, more of the social side. Oh, so can being social make you a better human? Well, that's a good question, actually. I don't even know how we test that, man. Maybe maybe more beer te- experiments, because... <laughs> 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 no, honestly, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that beer can make you a better human, necessarily. I just think that when you marry beer in... In physical exercise, like the you know the example I was bringing up, wasn't there some kind of event that you were in in college that really that incorporated beer and exercise? I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, there was a beer run once upon a time in college. So you have heard of it before? Not pub running. You were talking about you. You were clearly okay, talking pub- about pub running. I've. I've never done well, pub running before. <laughs> I was talking about the concept of, of marrying alcohol with a with an exercise. <laughs> oh, I didn't catch it. Um, yes, I did. It's called the underwear run. I, I did in college. So one, you have to drink, you have to chug like two beers before you run, and then you have to be also be in your underwear, and then you run. It's a two mile sprint basically, and then there's a winner at the end. Okay. How many other two-mile sprint competitions have you been a part of? That was two-mile sprint. That is the only. That's a very odd distance. It's the only two-mile sprint I've ever been a part of. All right. I came in second place. Why did you do that one? 
That's awesome. Good job. Uh, I think that was Jeff's idea. Well, that's not that's not a good reason. I wanted you to be like <laughs> I did that one because it was interesting because it had the two beers in in front of it, or maybe I had the underwear, you know, stipulation that made it interesting enough to see that I might have a leg up on the competition or that. No, you you should have seen run. you should have seen me on the way to that event because Jeff was like, "Yeah, dude, we're gonna go do this run," and I'm like, "Okay." And then we're in the car going, it's like, well, it's actually, it's an underwear run. I'm like, what, man? I got to, I, I got to strip down to my underwear. He's like, yeah. And it's like, <laughs> well, and we got to drink beer right before. Like they have a bunch of beer in the, at the starting line. Yeah. And you have to drink two before you can even start running. And I was like, what am I? I thought we were like, I'm in athletic clothes. We're going on a two mile like race. And now I'm wearing my underwear and now I'm down to drinking beers and running. I don't know. So, so no, I, I wasn't. That was not. That was pre better humanology days. That was not an experiment. That was just me going with the flow. You're totally determined to make me not be able to have any opportunity to make a point here. That is just. At I all just. Point. I don't think that alcohol makes you better human, man. I just. I don't. I don't think it makes you better human at all. Not. I totally <laughs> agree. It doesn't make you better human. I just think you're you're a big fan of Devil's Advocate. That's what it is. Well, that that as well. But I think there there is some merit to the, those kinds of groups. I guess pub runs are are mostly. In, in the UK, I know they have a club here in San Antonio, but I mean, I Talon feel like did get re- recently get back from the UK, not not too long yeah. ago. Yeah, it's just, been a while now. Well, over the pond, it's been a year. Yeah, well, yeah. I just think, yeah, there is some merit to to clubs that help motivate people to get out of the house and, and join groups that are going to push them physically. And if that includes a little bit of beer every now and then, then you know, hey, good on them. That's all I'm saying. I got you. Yeah. Okay, I got you. <laughs> all right dude so let's, let's hop to it so what do you think about i don't know like sh- i guess we should say the heart rate variability test is that a is that an approved thing or a disproved thing in your mind i approve the heart rate variability test because now i know that i'm allergic to beer but now i'm scared to test it for any other foods but i do think it is valuable useful information especially you know if i notice like uh, some negative things that you feel you do when you have beer yeah, so I'm going to go with approved as well. I think it's a good test for people to, without having to get like a full blood uh, panel done, which could be like hundreds of bucks or, you know, whatever. Like, this is pretty simple. If you have a heart rate monitor, uh, you can get a pulse ox at Walgreens for like 15 bucks. Check your pulse and eat some food. It's pretty easy. So approved for me, man. I think it's good. I think it's good. I think if you're a little bit like weary, like mm, I might have a peanut butter allergy though something like that i wouldn't test it i wouldn't go ahead and eat a bunch of peanut butter and test it something like that might be serious but wait why why wouldn't you test it because peanut, you, peanut butter you allergies are, are no joke oh are you talking about if you don't normally eat peanut butter right like like oh, okay yeah if you're worried that I like you're saying is... if you enjoy peanut butter on a regular basis you, you don't want to find out you're allergic to that <laughs> stuff. just keep eating it <laughs> it's too good no. <laughs> <laughs> no all right man approved go go test your uh heart rates find out what you're allergic to what you're not allergic to that is the podcast yeah we'll be excited to find out what things people are allergic to yeah also so let us know let us know peace out
best. Losers always whine about their best.